All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today. Nothing is into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. We hope that you enjoy. Enjoy. enjoy, enjoy. Um, welcome to episode 382 of the KISS FAQ Podcast. I'm your host, Julian Gill. Today we've got the crew back together. It's 69th Blizzard Ken. Hello. Marcus Almighty Mark. Greetings. And St. Louis Kiss Lonnie. Oh. And we've got a fun-filled show, but we got to do some business first. And first of all, a big salute to all our veterans and people who have served who are marking Veterans Day to day in the United States and in remembrance of those who fell in the rest of the world on Remembrance Day, of course, which is Armistice Day uh, for many Europeans and Commonwealth viewers. And for anyone else not celebrating today, well, sorry, I'm sure you have a birthday. Um, what else do we got? Uh, now that we're free to rock and roll anyway, Destroyer 45 next week is coming out. My review, I yeah. think, is going to drop Sunday. Um, week oh, of. Really? I'm very excited. You will have possibly seen some people starting to post photograph of physical product <laughs> on Facebook. Yeah. And uh, I must say, my, my review is like six pages long. It's, it's a Julian review, Ooh. so... I think mm -hmm. if you're on the fence about whether to support this product, purchase it. I did only have access to the stream and not to the physical uh, product. So um, I only judge it by its musical content, which of course, since Gene Simmons once said, it's the music stupid, is what it's all about. Though all that shit that's in the box that people are now starting to show <laughs> looks absolutely fantastic in reality versus uh, what was just... Um, you know, in kind of the prototype type photo. And Kiss freaking blew my mind yesterday. What about you guys when they dropped the Elder? You had started to talk about it, but they are celebrating music from the Elder uh, with a Japanese repo cover type picture disc thing. So 150 bucks. And then a regular hand one, which I don't know whether it's, it's it'll be that way rather than stop but maybe it should have been that way uh, you know, for the, um, yeah you guys have started on that before I, I i went in lonnie it sounded like someone put a quarter in you about the uh, yeah. merch i was you know i got up yesterday you know i saw on twitter yesterday that there was a couple you know this little blurbs like mentions that the elder was turning 40 today that kiss had tweeted out and i thought oh that's cool they're at least acknowledging it you know what I mean? I thought, you know, usually they usually don't have anything to say about the Elder. You know, say anything nice, don't say anything at all. They don't have anything to say about the Elder, usually. So I thought it was kind of cool that they at least acknowledged the fact that it was its release date, that it was turning 40 years old yesterday. And I thought, okay, that's cool. I, I didn't expect anything else after that. And I was pulling up to a restaurant. I went to a meeting and I saw on my phone that, that there were these vinyl releases for it. And I was like, that, you know, kind of I had to double take at it and go to Kiss Online and like click on it to make sure this was this was real and one you know somebody's just pulling your leg or yeah or somebody thinking oh this wouldn't this be cool type of thing and I was like oh wow it's really there and there's there's two versions of it a, a fifty dollar one and a hundred and fifty dollar and the hundred and fifty dollar was still available at the time and I was like oh hundred and fifty dollars for a new record I don't know I gotta go into this meeting walk walk in came back out. And it was gone. I was like, all right, well, temptation over. I'll just order the $50 one and be done with it and move on. But I thought it was fantastic that they're at least acknowledging it and doing something for it. Mark, how about you? Um, well, I was telling these guys that if it wasn't for you guys in your group chat, I wouldn't even have known that this was happening because I've been so offline lately finishing this record of mine that I didn't even know this stuff was happening. So when I, when I found out that it was uh, in existence... The, the $150 was long gone by that point. It was probably like, you know, hours already sold out. But, you know, not to sound like, you know, old, here goes Mark again. Uh, but I, I wasn't going to go and get th that one anyways. That's a lot of money, like, especially if you're going to ship it to me in Canada. The shipping is also a lot to come to me. So, uh, and Elder's not one of my top records. So I wasn't going to exactly drop 150 bucks for that. So, uh, but you know the interesting thing is that the fifty the fifty dollar one looks pretty neat. I haven't grabbed it yet, but I'll probably end up buying it. But what's making me hold out on it 
is the fact that they also released the Rock and Roll Over one on Picture Disc, and that is my favorite album of all time. So I will justify the sixty nine thirty five that's going to cost me with shipping to buy that Picture Disc. Right. So you you mentioned the album that you're working on. Of course, we we got together the other day to talk about your first single, which you're mm -hmm. you're dropping tomorrow. Just. Uh, tell this audience what's going on tomorrow what they can expect from project gemini well tomorrow the first single from my new record in the year 3073 book three will come out uh, it's called the holy shield uh it's going to be coming out you know i always say 12 midnight but knowing me it'll probably be like 11 15 tonight it'll come out you know 45 minutes early or something but uh yeah, I'm really happy with it. Uh, me and uh, Julian did a little interview the other day on Look at Rock and Roll podcast there that if you want to check out some more detail about it, uh, about the making of that and what I'm doing with the record. And we also talked a little bit about the uh, Dark Monarchy uh, three song EP that came out earlier this year as well. So I thank you, Julian, again for giving me the opportunity to speak about it. But yeah, I'm really excited about getting this first single out because I'm v very happy with it. And uh, I, I think it's a good a gateway to what to come what's to come with my new album that's going to be coming out well i agree the great single by the way Re regardless i haven't heard the album but the single's fantastic so do check it out on bandcamp tomorrow because don't forget it is uh midnight somewhere at all times so you mm. can release it whenever the hell you want um ken <laughs> elder yeah i mean <clears throat> I, I i was i was thinking earlier in the week about you know oh well, they do an L. Uh, they probably won't do anything for the elder, you know. Optimistic and, and, if, and if they, yeah, <laughs> if they, yeah, if they do something, it'll probably be a, br a brown, brown <laughs> turd vinyl or something like that. So <laughs> I thought uh, they probably. So I, you know, I, and I was busy, pretty busy yesterday morning working. Uh, and by the time I checked my email and I saw this thing about the elder, I was like, oh crap. And so I, you know, quickly checked it out, and the $150 one uh, was was gone at that time. I was off oh, crap, and and then the, but the other one was there available. So I, you know, I picked up that one. Um, I'm working out a deal with one of my close friends about uh, getting the the $150 one that. Uh, maybe give them a little profit on that one so uh anyway uh so hopefully i'll get that uh too so i'll have both of my hope um and so yeah it's cool that they 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 finally recognized the elder um hopefully down the line that we'll have actual box set you know a la, you know, do, a la, you know <laughs> destroyer you know destroyer you know do it well let's Let's start, okay, let's start put, doing more. Let's do The Elder. Let's do, you know, the first album. Let's do this or that. But I, I hope there's going to be uh, more of those. Um, as for Rock and Roll Over, that was pretty much a no-brainer. Uh, yeah, it's a cool picture disc. But the thing is, now I'll have, I'll have, where is it here? I'll have one to go with my original one. Mm. Picture disc that, you know, came out with, I think it was the 80s, the one that... Uh, Dutch fan club. That, one. Dutch numbered, one. yeah, one thousand number one thousand three hundred and sixty-two of, uh, of this one here. Those are beautiful so, when they came yeah, out. Really I, I only ever yeah. owned one of them, and it was like yeah. number four fifty-four of Asylum. Hmm. Oh, okay, yeah, I have. I think I have also. I have an elder. Actually, I have an elder one. Wow. And I, and I have a Creatures of the Night. Nice. Also. Oh, fancy. Nice. So uh, the picture disc. I didn't get all the picture discs. No, 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 no. But uh, those are the three I I got originally. You, you, you know what's interesting though? Uh, two comments really quickly. Um, I think one thing that actually caught my attention with these records that came out now, the Elder one and the Rock and Roll Overs. I really like these T-shirts that are coming out with them. I'm actually pondering oh, wow. to pull yeah. the trigger on a few of these T-shirts actually, because they look kind of cool. The, the Elder ones too are pretty cool. I like the one with the axe. The, the guitars that are on there on the front and that that one's kind of uh you know making mm -hmm. me consider you know opening the wallet a bit there for that because i i t-shirts i love t-shirts i mean i wear all kinds of different kind of rock paraphernalia shit so that's that's right up my alley so but uh I, i'm actually oh, oh he disappeared uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> flash me too 
<laughs> I, I was going to say that uh, I, one thing I found interesting, and I'm curious for your guys' comment, is do you think it was wise that they only made 500 of that? Do you think no. they should have maybe made like a little bit more than that? No, I, I've got a, a bone of contention with both of these. Number one, I'm thrilled that they are celebrating The Elder with a, a, a line of merch for it because I'm totally wrong. I, I voted in the online poll on, on the FAQ that no chance they were going to do anything. So um, it, it, it is counterbalanced by them doing the ultimate classic rock stuff, bashing the album. But uh, I'm annoyed in, in two senses that they announced Rock and Roll Over today. I mean, we should have seen it coming since they're doing all these freaking weird anniversaries, 45th, 73rd, 29th, um, you know, for stuff that... You pulled the trigger yesterday. I got in because I got a message that it was on set, uh, the Elder stuff was up, so I managed to get uh, both picture discs, and my intention was to flip the um, the Japanese one because the 500, it was available when I was there. Very little interest in it otherwise. So, Ken, I will help you if it arrives in good shape. Um, you know, <laughs> at cost, you're not paying me any freaking extra. You don't do that to people. Oh, um, I pay, I pay extra. You pay, you pay I know people that do that to people. You can pay postage. I don't. Um, especially when there's only 500 of the fuckers. Because I think that number is egregiously low with no notice. That it sold out in 40 it minutes is. or less. That uh, you know, oh, yeah, is, is just shocking. And that leaves a lot of people who are out of time zones, Lonnie, in meetings, regardless of whether you would have the bills on it. Right, right, right. Um, and you like, didn't have the chance to think out. about it. Instead, you know, it, it raises fury that people wake up, uh, Australians, yeah, uh, that's what I was you know, and they're like, there was a fucking sale on Kiss stuff and I was asleep and it's all gone. Well, that just freaking say, you know, sucks. And then mm -hmm. add to the insult, they then maybe order some of the stuff yeah. off the Elder Line and Rock and Roll Over drops today and Mark pointed out the cost of shipping, you know, yeah. so mm -hmm. you're getting double banged. Uh, you know, on shipping twice. Mm. That said, some of the designs are fantastic. I'm not overly happy about no Eric or Ace on the Elder stuff, but I right. think there's probably a re reason why that's the case. Um, mm. But, you know, that's my preference because I like the Japanese design of that Elder um, T-shirt. Nice. The Rock and Roll Over one, the yellow Rock and Roll Over T-shirt with just the mm. album cover. It's like Come the on. original one from, yes. from, from, from the seventies. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, that's great. That's and awesome. they've got a, they've got another one that's got the um, the promo uh, songs listed on the backside. You know, yeah, that, yeah. that they did. Yeah, the yeah, sampler like right. is a nice touch. I like the Elder Rug. I think that's a cool little riff on that original see-through clingy. That was one of the few promotional right. items. I, I think it would have been nice as a mirror. Or to take the Italian elder art that was done, that that's the ad, uh, and uh, a collector posted the picture of it with the birthday yesterday. I was like, ah, shit, that's the one thing I really wanted in the book that I was never able to find. So I'm conflicted. It's great that they're honoring it, but it's annoying for fans who've missed out, um, yeah. such as yeah. life. I, I felt bad for the guy, you know, who, who can't check his email and check his phone during the day. You know, who's maybe working on an assembly line, you know, and he gets off work at five o'clock. Like, oh, shit. You know, or, or like Julie was saying about the Australians or something. They wake up and they, they're they're dead asleep. They wake up like, well, crap, that sucks for them. 500 copies is, I mean, come on. It, it's Not kissing. It's well, may, maybe they were worried. Maybe they were worried that well, there's no way 500 me. people are going to be That's interested when we're putting out Destroyer out and, you know, and, and all this and that. Well, that's because the, uh, off the soundboard one is still for sale. The you know the the cat sphincter stuff or whatever the the, the vinyl. <laughs> so, but the other Bird thing is, is they sh they should they should allow, allow only one purchase of one of those yes, per, per order uh, because you I, I I know there's people out there there that bought you know probably five or whatever that are going to try to make big profit and they and they yeah. will I you know they, they will. will but I think. Is they should limit it to one. And that's fair, and one. that's the American way, and all that. But it also does <laughs> suck when you're a fan and you miss out. So um, yeah. I wish they would limit it to just one. Per I, I saw people say I got two, you know, and then the talk shop did the signed uh, Destroyer forty five two CD versions, and those were gone instantaneously. I saw someone bragging that they got ten. 
I was like, for fuck's sake, see, man. You, you see, see you, that, so you that, know what's going on there. You know, even you in know. mine, I, I will say that, yeah, I intended to flip, but I always intended that if I had a friend who hadn't been able to get it, I would do the right thing without a second thought. You know, but 10 copies? Come on, that that's completely unreasonable unless you're doing, you've worked out a bulk, you know, say for an Aussie. You know, yeah. like Phil does sure. the fan club stuff, and he often, you know, is able to get multiple copies, you know, to distribute down there for those but that's not what's going on no it's totally not what's going and you know it's brutal but it's the jungle welcome to the jungle watching that today bruce's uh indoor show (laughs) fucking bad (laughs) and that's uh the next topic bruce going indoors yeah you know announced the vegas show right after i got my refunds for my uh hotel and canceled my flight (laughs) damn it (laughs) Again, such is life. That's the joke. Such, such is life. Uh, I, I would have been bitching if I hadn't gotten the refund and at least the hotel refunded completely. Still waiting for Ticketmaster, funnily. Yeah, huh. ticket bastards. Shocking. Yeah. They're number one, aren't they? Number but, that, uh, you know, thoughts on that? Long, kind of you know, is, is that the sort of shit we've been waiting for? For uh, Bruce to bring it off the boat and into a club? And I hope it does well. Yeah. I hope it motivates him. Yeah. It's awesome. I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's a good idea. I mean, I th- I I can clearly remember tons of people saying that Bruce should take this on the road. Bruce should go and do this more often. Blah blah blah. So I think that this is a great idea. I mean, his set lists are always really good. I mean, people are always amazed by the songs that he pulls out, mainly because he's doing all the stuff that Kiss won't touch with a ten foot pole, right? So you want to go and hear these songs, you know, in a in a rock, you know, format in a live show kind of thing then this is your chance to do it right and he has a good band too as well i'm guessing the same guys are going to be going with them on the road so that's going to be a well it's not on the road it's down the street from they they live in vegas so oh yeah playing there there isn't much of a road trip yeah so but i mean i think that's it's great i mean people will have the opportunity to go and check it out and i think that uh i think it'll do well for him to be honest Mm-hmm. I hope so. I really hope so because you know here's an opportunity now for people who didn't cancel their Vegas plans uh, because of the the residency getting shit canned, you know, to put their money where their mouth is and go see and support Bruce and the band. And like he said it, when I was listening back to that uh, indoor show, you know, he's playing songs now that weren't necessarily from his era because Kiss fans want to hear them and they wouldn't otherwise hear them. I think that is so cool, becoming a gatekeeper to forgotten Kiss gems um, and, and the stuff that, you know, Kiss would never do Exciter. Why would they? Talk yeah. talk about you here and we will back. Yeah. About, uh... yeah. yeah. Well, it, mm-hmm. well, he hear, yeah. he hears it from his band members too, because he, yeah. he also said that the, those are the guys that push him to do stuff that he might otherwise not consider, mm-hmm. and they do such a good job of it. it I mean, it, it's yeah. it isn't Paul on vocals clearly, but the guys, you know, Zach takes more of the Gene songs, and Todd takes more mm-hmm. of the Paul songs, and. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they put together a really good show. I loved seeing them indoors in the Stardust because that started to feel more like how it should be for a musician of his caliber and stature. 12 years with Kiss. What's he t- going on 20 with Grand Funk? Mm-hmm. And all the, all the people he's played with over the years. I, I mean, and also being one of the nicest people in rock and roll. You know, yeah. you, you really can't say... Uh, you know, give him too many more superlatives without exploding his head. Hey, his head will explode. <laughs> He's not that sort. So, yeah. cool stuff. Uh, you know, and Bruce, we trust. All right. Uh, exactly. Before we get into the topic, two more quick pieces of news. Uh, Mike Brown has an interview that he did with Doc mm-hmm. McGee where he asks lots of questions. And you can tune in to his rock and roll experience to find out the answers. So uh, congrats on getting Doc, Mike. That's really cool. And uh, thanks for being there to report on all the cool stuff for us as well. Last thing is a little bit of my own horn. It's now the 11th day of November. And I am inundating a variety of places with all the features. They weren't all in the original online November back in 2012. Good God, that's a long time ago. Um, and, and some only ended yeah. up in later versions of the book as well for that matter so uh, check it out it's all free it's all online and you don't have to be a member of the cesspit so all right so what did we say we we're going to talk about we we're going to actually do a show with a topic today and 
next week's the 20th anniversary of the Kiss box set. So just do a catch up on box sets, how it's aged, how the material is, and, and how you approach looking at it as it reaches that 20th anniversary. Now we're, that we're about to receive a dearth of other archival material that ties in nicely with the release of Destroyer 45. Lonnie, let's start with you on your, your thoughts on the box. You know, we we were bouncing around show topics this week, and and you get and Julian's suggestion. How about a twentieth anniversary of of the box set? And I, for one, like couldn't believe that the box set was twenty years old. I mean, that that's bizarre to me, in the sense that like when I saw Kiss in '96, they were selling T-shirts at the show that said they had like the Destroyer album cover on the front, and on the back it said. You know, Kiss Destroyer, 76 to 96, 20 years of destruction. And I thought, oh, wow, that's really cool because Destroyer is so old and it's such a classic album. And, like, meanwhile, like, I bought the box set 20 years ago. That's, like, mind-blowing to me that I, when I put it in in those terms. Um, but I, you know, I... I I love I like the box set. You know, I have, I have some issues with it, as I'm sure we all do, that we'll probably get into... You know the number of, of just regular studio album tracks that appear on it when we were always promised for years prior to that well, when we put out the box set it's going to be the mother of all box sets mm. you know we, we, we were promised a lot of things and <laughs> it's, it's kiss so come on um but but there are great things on there. um and i and i i like it and you know ken showing off you know his as well and I, I've told, I remember the day it came out. I've, I've told the story on here before that, you know, I wanted the, the miniature guitar case version of it. And Best Buy opened up and, you know, it went inside and picked it up, got it, and went up to the cashier and it rang up as a Sega game for thirty nine ninety five, And I <laughs> swiped my debit card and ran out the door. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> anyway, that, that's my favorite memory of the box set. <laughs> yeah, Sega. Let's go yeah. north to Canada, hey. Uh, Mark, your your, your yeah. take uh, overview on it. Um, I really liked it. I mean, back when it came out, <clears throat> I was still probably early into getting back into my Kiss fandom at that point. So... I I was in you know, all these other things that were that were out already or all these, you know, gems that were already floating around. So when they you know, when you see something like this come out and you know, you see they have like the strutter and the deuce demo on there the, that uh Eddie Kramer did, you know, I was like, Wow, shit, that that's great. You know, I was immediately excited about it. And I didn't buy the guitar case one like that you guys got. I just got like the regular just the box version of it. Uh, mainly because I, where I was, they didn't have that around. I don't know, maybe I was just, you know, maybe our store already sold out or something. But I just bought this version, and uh, I really liked it. I mean, there's a lot of stuff on there that I had, I had never heard at that point. That was the main selling point for me, was that. So, you know, because they had, like, Don't You Hesitate and Mad Dog and all these demos that I had never heard before, or the Mr. Speed demo and stuff like that. And, you know, it, it was it was pretty cool, and... Throughout the years, I'll be honest, I've listened to this box uh, quite a few times, actually. I, I've, I've catch myself bringing it into the car quite a few times and uh, listening to it while I'm driving. And for me, the, for, for the longest time, it had always been disc three that I'd always bring into the car, the 76 to 82 stuff. But near the last few years, I found that I was listening to a lot of disc four. A lot. Disc five is something I never really bring, bring into the car very often, uh, but I was really into disc three and disc four. Uh, I really liked, you know, that they had stuff like Time Traveler on there, and they had, you know, Ain't That Peculiar on there, and you know, so that that was, those were those were the selling points. And like I said, you got to keep in mind that you're talking to somebody who at that point was just getting back into the whole collecting of Kiss stuff. So a lot of these things, like I said, was just new discoveries for me. 
Yeah, I, I just went and grabbed my El Cheapo cigar box version. I've never yeah, been interested. Yeah, I was never interested in getting the the super duper fancy one, um, just because it, you know, it was the music again for me that mattered. And this thing's pretty beat to shit now. You know, the book is falling apart, and that's what mm -hmm. would make me actually buy the guitar case one. Is that it's hardbound in there and obviously with you know doing some of my stuff i've you know been through the pages trolling for quotes over the years so it's you know been one of those things ken why why the guitar box for you and why haven't you had it signed like lonnie's why is lonnie yeah, so much yeah. more impressive more of a yeah, fan ken, what's here? wrong with you yeah <laughs> you're on mute ken yeah well <laughs> i didn't bring it to um I guess the Gene Simmons vault or anything like that. Um, I brought some other stuff to sign. Uh, yeah, I never thought of getting that signed. It was kind of tucked away in the in the closet. But you know what a um, pain in the ass that must be to lug around to get signed. It was a pain in the ass. I had to take this thing to Atlanta to get Vinny to sign it. Um, I actually gave it to Joe Odell to take to Canada to get Peter to sign it. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. Nice. Dang. Yeah. So yeah, mine's not signed. Um, yeah, this is like the what it, the the mini guitar they call it, the mini guitar case, but it's really it's it's like a clarinet. Yes, what's that? Clarinet. <laughs> clarinet. <laughs> clarinet. <laughs> yeah, clarinet case. I mean, that, that's what I see nice. it as really, um, and it may have been that way before they put the Kiss logo on it. Um, <laughs> um, but there was another one, a bigger version, which was a really like a guitar yeah. case, and that one came with a. a yeah, it came with a uh, gold record a, of a live, a, a live, yeah, a live, nailed it. Live, yeah, uh, gold record award or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, so I thought oh, that was good, but that was that was really steep uh, price. In two thousand one, thousand dollars was a lot more money than it is now. It was, Little uh, did we know that was going to become cheap in terms of his <laughs> pricing. <laughs> but yeah, I know. But now um, you know, I, I remember. I don't know if I had the day off, day off or what, but I remember waiting in front of Best Buy um, out front before it opened. Like I got there like 15 minutes before it opened. It was like me and one other person that wanted the Kiss uh, <laughs> box. There's no big line or anything like that. Actually, I remember going in and it's like, okay, well, I know I want that other version, and it wasn't even out there. They had the you know cigar box one, I think, out. I said, "Hey, where's the other one?" And they had to pull it from the, you know, the, their warehouse in the back. What are you talking about? Like, oh. So, but anyway, yeah, I mean, it's it was great at the time to finally get something because every, every other artist had already put out box sets yeah. by by that time, and and it was good to get some uh, unknown or not unknown, but also demos more. of songs I'd never heard. Yeah, and and. Uh, you know, it's my life. You know, I was like, oh, it's my life. But you know, the Psycho wrong, Circus wrong era. Version. Yeah, yeah, it's not the same one, but still, it was something. And uh, you know, it was interesting, and I, I enjoyed it for what it for what it is or what it was. But I don't think it uh, it's definitive though. No, I, I think it's as, it's as far from Mon you know the mother of all box sets. I think it's the Samuel yeah. L. Jackson motherfucker of all box sets <laughs> because it didn't live up to any of the hype. Yeah. It had way too much release stuff, and it, when you start looking at the discs, disc one is fantastic. You get like mm -hmm. twelve rare cuts on there, and it drops to eight rare cuts on disc two. Then you're down to four on disc three, and three on disc four, and then on disc five, there's really only two. I can generously say that there are nine because of some of the edits and stuff mm -hmm. that's called from other albums, like nothing can keep me from puking on you. But um, in, in terms of the actual rare stuff. We got the like, choose is on there, which, well, you know, which is a Japanese release. Doesn't right, really count. Which same, same not, with talk. doesn't really count. I agree. Yeah. So it was shouted out loud live 96 right. and, on um, greatest kiss. you know, within the edit, <laughs> childhood hens does count kind of half half a track with the outramental coda on it you know was cool so i i was happy with it but and, and i'm gonna raise this question for everyone who's getting the destroyer mm. box next week your first three songs uh or i think they're the first three are on disc two don't you hesitate mad dog and god of thunder are of course on destroyer 45 
I think they sound far superior than new transfers mm -hmm. on Destroyer 45. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I was actually very happy when listening to the stream by the fidelity of them. And I mentioned that in my review. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, I, I want to know what other people think, whether it's my ears, well, maybe it's just mastered for Julian. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, Julian likes that mastering level and the balance. Mm -hmm. so, so we shall see. I think when I got the box, I was pretty disappointed by the balance. Mm. But when you print out, I'm going to do a Ross, when you print out a sheet of all the <laughs> songs that count as rare tracks, it's not as bad as my brain tells me it is. What are there, I think, 94 songs altogether on the box? Mm -hmm. And a really good chunk of that. Well, you have notes yeah. as well, Ken? Well, no, this is the. This oh, is you're, what you're, you're reading the freaking manual. Okay. <laughs> no, this is We're not as prepared as usually. Come on. This came. Uh, that was on the back that, of it, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah on yeah, the yeah. back of it. Yeah, that was under the uh, the wrapping, shrink right? Wrap, yeah. The yeah, shrink wrap. So I, I had kept that. Um, so it still has it. Uh, it says six hours of recordings from my archives. Uh, Ninety-four career-spanning tracks. Did you have to take your glasses off in 2001 to read this? Because I sure as shit didn't. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. Including uh, 30... Yeah, not, 94 30. career spanning tracks. Yeah, 30 previously unreleased band and solo demos, outtakes, and live recordings. Um, so, yeah. That's so funny. I mean, both of those, like, I need bifocals now. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. I can read books without my glasses. That's it. But anyway. so, so, Lonnie, how pleased were you or how dissatisfied were you with, with the balance after you got done with it? Uh, I'd be curious to know which was the first disc you all went to and which is your go-to hmm. disc. I think, Mark, you alluded to number three. But uh, let's start with Lonnie. You know, I, um, I, I was satisfied to an extent with it, but I was also, you know, I, I have, like you said, 30, how many unreleased tracks? 30, whatever. 30. 30. That means two thirds of it I already have. Two thirds of it I already have. So if I'm dropping coin on a kiss box set, not and it's not just me. If I'm dropping the kind of money on a kiss box set, odds are I have most of, if not all, the albums. I mean, seriously. So I, I was I was disappointed that there was as many songs that I already owned. But I was happy with what was on it, and I get it. Like there, there, there there's re I, you know there, there's legal reasons why you can't release just everything that you want on there. But you know, I, I was hoping for like the Eddie Van Halen demos and things like that that we'd all heard about for mm -hmm. years. That you know that that didn't turn up. That I it eventually obviously turned up on on the vault and things like that. But you know, I was hoping for more deeper cuts like that so like being that two-thirds of it was stuff i already owned it was a little underwhelming although i did like the unreleased stuff that i did get but for me it's disc one i mean we talked we julian already talked about it disc one like it starts off the first i don't know how many songs are previously unreleased like the first 10 songs oh. on 12 songs on disc one are previously unreleased i mean it's that's what it was that's that's what it was supposed to be that's in my mind anyway that's what it was supposed to be was just boom, 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 boom. Like the Alice Cooper box that really here, here and this is a, this isn't this is totally out of context. But the Bon Jovi box set is actually really freaking good too. There's like nothing on there that is previously released. It is four discs of all previously unreleased material, and that's what in my mind that's what a box set should be. So to me, it was underwhelming that two thirds of the songs are yet. Yeah, Mark, what about you? Well, like I said, I mean, I. I wasn't underwhelmed because, like I said, I was not as caught up as you guys were at that time with the material that was already available for KISS stuff. But, you know, now looking back at it years later, of course, you kind of think to yourself, well, they could have added a lot more to it. But uh, I, I was pretty satisfied with it. And like I said, Disc 3 was my go-to one. I, I think mainly because I liked the flow of it because it had a lot of the solo stuff. On there, and at that time when I had bought the 
the this box set, I was really into getting back into listening to their solo albums. I know I know it's one of the first things I started collecting in on vinyl was, oh, I got to get, you know, this Australian Peter Chris, and I got to get, you know, I was really collecting those ones. And so that era was really something that I was into a lot. So because it also had the creature stuff on there, it also had some, you know, uh, unmasked stuff on there too. I mean, that, that era was kind of what I was listening to again in abundance at that time so i really liked disc three and then later on disc four became quite the heavy rotation in my car but the one thing i'm kind of curious about you did mention julian how you said that the versions of some of these songs that are on the destroyer box sound abundantly better uh i'm, I'm guessing they must have gotten access back to some original you know quarter inch tapes or half inch tapes to get this stuff off of because and the only way I can imagine that they got such good sounding ones of it is off the tape or maybe they made like a digital transfer of it, you know, off the original analog tapes because the, I, I'm just curious to hear to hear the, the difference in it because we have had these ones for a while to listen to. I am curious to hear the difference in the quality because I'm one of those audio guys. I love doing that kind of transferring of tape and stuff like that. And I, I, I wish they would do... You know what? And I know I've bitched about this before. I really wish they would do something like that on a, on some sort of a, like a documentary video. I mean, Iron Maiden has a great video where they show them doing the whole reissue catalog of their vinyl. They go into the studio and they show them going through the, the analog tapes. And they even show that they've got the digital tapes for the later albums that they did, like, you know, Fear of the Dark and Onward. All right. And they even, they even have a video like that, them doing the seven inch singles, you know. And there's even... For crying out loud, David Bowie, the man's not even alive, and his estate is smart enough to know that when they reissued, uh, I think it was a uh, Space Odyssey on seven inch single, there's a, there's like a four minute video of the guy in the studio doing the the transfer of it, showing the hmm. the audio transfer. So why can't Kiss? Space Odyssey, yeah. huh? rise your heart. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and and again, I I think a lot of it's in the mastering. You know, I I don't want to say too much about it before. You know, obviously we're a week out, so I, I don't feel too too bad in in you know giving a couple of observations. I think uh, also from that perspective, the mastering of the stuff that's also on the vault sounds far better on this. But there's also a uniformity in the sound dynamics across all of those. Uh, so whether they have access to original tape, I don't know if a Polygram or a Universal, you know, if that wasn't all in the bonfire, or whether they had digital clones of the tapes, basically, which allows them to go back to the original source and then take it from there and put it in the hands of a proper mastering engineer to give it every bit of treatment that it needs. And maybe the people in house at Universal did a better job than the people in house at you know who did the stuff for gene you know yeah. so I, I i or maybe i just again i find it more pleasing to my ears so ken you know what, what's your take on on favorite discs uh, yeah I, I don't know what's my favorite disc um i mean I, I was gravitating to more of the stuff that we hadn't you know heard before um i find myself skipping the stuff i've heard a million times and going to the tracks that are, you know, unreleased, were unreleased, um, that I'd never heard before or hardly heard before. Um, yeah, I mean, the sequencing, you know, I, I, I do like a chronological kind of sequencing when they do box sets. I hate, I really hate when they, they jumble it up and go, you know, from one time period and to, to skip to way later and then come back to... It's like, what the hell are you guys doing? But this is, you know, they did a pretty, pretty yeah. decent job of, of keeping it chronological. Um, one thing I did notice though was kind of interesting is, uh, in the book, I was reading the book yesterday, and you know they they have comments about the songs and stuff. But the other thing about it is the Psycho Circus stuff. <laughs> they still at that time they were still lying about who played on the, on the album <laughs> because it said you know. Paul Stanley guitar, Ace Frehley lead guitar, you know, Gene Bass and and Peter Chris on drums. And I'm like, wait a minute, you know, I should say, you know, Tommy Thayer on Psycho Circus or whatever. Kevin uh, Allen. Yeah, I mean, I, oh, what was the big deal about keeping it so secret at at that time? I mean, it, it had been a few, you know, a couple, three years. 
and it's November of twenty of two thousand one. I mean, they're basically done at that point. Yeah, yeah. If you exactly. think about it, I mean, they they were done at that point. Yeah. What was yeah, the so, point of what was the point of, of of covering it up still at that point? Yeah, of hiding it. And so I thought that that was kind of interesting going back and looking at it that way. But I did like the, you know, they're always love their talking about the songs and you know how they wrote it or you know what was behind it and so on um that's part of the best stuff that you, you know you want to see or read or learn about you know the songs that they uh recorded throughout their career so it's it's a decent book um you know for what what it is yeah, the book is definite high point for the whole box. I mean, disc one, you start off with Deuce and Strutter. I immediately rolled my eyes because we'd had those since the early 90s, you know. Mm. And, but yeah. they, sounded, they sounded good. Uh, the Wicked kiss. Lester stuff, I was like, yawn, oh, three songs. And then I heard them, and they were, you know, new remasters, basically, of those songs and versions mm -hmm. that hadn't circulated up to that point. So that was very exciting. The Bell Sound Studio demos, absolutely exciting. I had no clue those existed. Um, yeah. Paul's Stop, Look to Listen, atrocious. Uh, <laughs> absolutely horrendous, but really fascinating. And very brave of him, I felt, to put that on there next to Gene's mm -hmm. Lita because mm -hmm. you have pre-kiss from both of the primary members of the band and one's an exquisite uh, kind of Paul McCartney-esque piano ballad, very touching, a little bit nonsensical, but whimsical. And the other's this brutal assault uh, mm -hmm. on the yeah. senses with zero refinement, zero panache, and about as far away from Paul Stanley as he now exists, as you could guess. So I, I absolutely, I, I loved it, but didn't like it if you take my, my meaning um and mm -hmm. then of course the acrobat live daisy tape which was just oh, yeah. a taste of what now circulates out there it was mm -hmm. around i'm sure in, in some circles way back then but that first disc pound for pound even with oh me poo-pooing what had existed or circulated and it only being two songs from the demo it was always where it was at and if i recall correctly universal canada put out a uh, promo seat single a single disc promo which i managed to get a copy and i think most of it came from that disc clearly because you know it, having 12 songs and then it drops off it was impossible i'd never heard of don't you hesitate and again i know that tape mm -hmm. circulated for many um I, I think jr questioned that that was him on drums not peter so you know, even the credits for the other Kiss stuff may not be entirely accurate, right. regardless of, you know, the Psycho Circus point. Uh, the God of Thunder demo, again, very brave. Yeah, I hadn't of, heard that at that point, no. Yeah, uh, same, same for me and Mad Dog. You know, so mm -hmm. there was, even though I thought of myself as a collector at that point, you know, there was a lot that I hadn't heard, a lot that I didn't know mm -hmm. was out and about in, in those circles. But right after that, it really goes downhill. <clears throat> You know, those first two discs are really strong, but then it starts getting filled in way too much with, you know, Mark, I'm sorry that you like, you know, disc three as much, but that was a major letdown for me. You know, when they put on something like You're All That I Want, and that is just one of the worst demos that I've ever heard from this band. Yeah, I, it is I, pretty bad. I don't like that at all. But then again, your story makes total sense as someone getting back into it and catching up on, on the period and liking the sequencing. So, um, ain't that peculiar? Yeah, very peculiar. Mm -hmm. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, was, I was really happy, but it, it seemed that the 80s got very token treatment, rightfully, with Kiss's legacy being firmly rooted in the originals era. And yeah. you know, clearly they were reunited at that point. And then disc five, I actually, I actually find that a really interesting one as a later fan, uh, you know, and a fan of the nineties to bring mm -hmm. all of that stuff together, even though I criticized it as, um, you know, being edits and stuff that only makes a list is something <laughs> different because of being an edit rather than the album version or being called from another source. It brings together the latter stages of their career to the point very nicely and represents it well. And having got to choose acoustic, regardless of being released in Japan, is really cool. It's a great song. It's a great song acoustically. And great it's also, version, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not ever going to criticize Got to Choose. So, you know, I, I, I flip between disc one and disc mm-hmm. five more often than not because, uh, again, I've, I've had the Magna Graphic stuff for years to, to listen to complete, even though it's not as good quality as this. Um, so, so it's very cool. And I, I pruned out all the release tracks uh, out of my rips that I listen to digitally. I only listen. I've got 36 songs in my playlist from this, and that includes all those edits and remixes like Nowhere to Run. So how do we rank this? Do we say that it was a good effort? Jolly good show, old chaps. Um, <clears throat> did, did it really measure? Well, I, I think we all agree that it didn't measure up to the hype, but you know, how well does it stand the test of time 20 years on? Is it something that you've gone back and listened to or are going to go and listen to? And is it going to make you, it actually made me look at their other boxes. You know, I, I, after listening to this, I was like, you know, I want to evaluate it against something like the Alive box set, which I then dug into this week. And I actually found that more interesting as product overall, even though it was all previously released with the exception of the, the, the Alive 4. Funny. Um, you know, it, it, I, I think it holds up fairly well as a timestamp of what the band was from 73 to 2001. I think it's, you know, I, I, I think it's a good representation of the band as a whole. Um, yeah, I, I, I have my issues with it that I, I wish there, there was more unreleased material. You're talking about disc five, Julian, and it made me think about some of those Psycho Circus tracks that were not released, like like um, Body and, and, and say what you want about them, and they're not they're not mind blowing songs, but like Body and Soul and I Want to Rule the World and things like that, like those were still pretty fresh songs at the time. Why not throw those on there? In 2001, I, I I think that's a missed opportunity as well. I mean, I know they put that that version of "It's My Life" on there, and and that's all well, good, and fine. But I, I would have preferred a 1982 version of "It's My Life" as opposed to a 1998 version of "It's My Life." Mm-hmm. But I yeah. I think there's a but the point is I think there's a lot of missed opportunities on the box set. You know, whether, whether it be some of those Psycho Circus songs that, that circulated years later, you know, why weren't those on there? They're, and it, it leaves a lot of questions of why wasn't this on there? Why wasn't that on there? More than anything else. And, and it feels like we had 30 songs or 30 whatever songs, and we just kind of mailed in the rest when we were promised the mother of all box sets. And, and it's fine. It's a good time sample of what the band was for from 73 to to 01, but I, I, I think it just leaves a lot to be desired. It could have been so much more. So much more. That's a nice <clears throat> way to really kind of sum it. Uh, Ken? Yeah, I mean, I, I give it a like a B grade, I guess, um, if you want to grade it. Um, I, 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 because of things like, you know, come on, only two lick it up songs on there <laughs> it's like um yeah. hello and you got three animalized songs uh and then you be, got I thought you'd be happy with that uh, we're going <laughs> in the 80s at this point asylum they they only give you two asylum songs or, or you know also so you know what's what's going on there um how does Animals get three and then lick it up and then and the asylum get only two. Uh, it, it just doesn't make sense on some of these choices. Like and then again, also with uh, um, hot in the shade, you, you get uh, what three? Actually, we well technically ain't that peculiar, I guess. But technically, you got four from hot hot Silver in the shade. Can, can your biggest Silver. gripe of this is the amount, the amount of studio tracks that you already own? This is your biggest gripe with this box set? No, no, no. I mean, Silver Spoon. <laughs> I mean, well, I'm going to have two look it up. So you have to I don't look understand it up. the choice. I don't understand some of the song choices for putting in a... Is, is Silver Spoon a classic? I would expect classic 
I think that was uh, an error. I think Paul yeah. said, "Don't put silver spoon on it." And he they wrote, didn't hear the "Don't put." He thinks that's he thinks that's one of his best songs. On, Wait, um, oh, I, he, he thinks, he, I think he, when I was reading the book, say, yeah, like he, he really likes that <laughs> song. So obviously, he's like, "Oh, no, you got to put silver spoon on there." You know, you have to put Silver Spoon on it. I can only imagine the editing process for the songs that were originally going to be on this box set. And then after Paul and Gene, or both, you know, got a hold of it, like, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. That, you know, take that off of there. Or, you know, you need to stick this one on there. Um, it's so, kind of like the concerts. And it's kind of, uh, to me, it's hypocritical, or what do you want to call it, where... You say, oh, the fans and the people, they only want the hits and stuff like that. But then, well, why are you giving me Silver Spoon on this box set? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, I think there's better songs out there yeah. that you could have put on here. So well, that, that kind of stuff bothered, sake, it should bothered have been me. Read My Body. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I mean, it's, it's oh, like why is two sides of the coin on greatest kits? That doesn't make any sense either. <laughs> yes, so I, I kind of I, don't understand the the thinking there. So I mean, yeah, like I said, it's a B for me. It's a it's a good temp. It's great to have the unreleased stuff, and you know the package was nice. Um, but uh, yeah, it it left me a little bit like you know why well, they could have done a little bit better with that. So, Mark. Well, like I said, for me, I, I was pretty happy with it back then. I probably would have gave it like a B rating overall uh now going but looking back at it maybe not that high rating but i'll be honest like i said i still tend to grab at least one or two of those cds every once in a while when i go for for a car ride like for a long one you know i just for some reason maybe it's just because it sits with me as one of those memories that i have like a like a positive one of getting back into getting into kiss then and that was one of those early purchases that was like a big purchase you know it was like five discs and you know a book and stuff like that so it wasn't like a 20 dollar cd purchase this is something a little bit more of your investment money going into it so i i i still listen to like i said disc three and disc four are my go-tos still from that and i i have a good good memory of it so i i still think it's good i mean you know, I, I think that they could have did a hell of a lot worse. Knowing how KISS has, you know, continued its career, you know, there could have been a hell of a lot worse. I mean, I keep thinking back to that time when they did that, when they did that release. This is not even music, but when they did those, you know, when they do those little tchotchke giveaways where they had those socks and all that stuff in that little box that they gave you for like 150 bucks. Remember? I think even Ken, oh, you were the one who was comp- Yeah. Yeah. That box. Oh, had, like, yeah. those odd, weird odds. Yeah, and it's like, come box. on. What, what was the meaning of Cigar that? Cigar box. I missed yeah. out on that. It's like, you know, it's like the guys went through their laundry drawers and said, what could we give our fans to buy for 150 bucks, you know? <laughs> yeah, so I think it tries a bit too hard to be all things. It's not for the diehards. It's not mm-hmm. really for the casuals because they'd, they'd be like, what am I listening to? Why am I listening to this? <laughs> if they just want, you know, like a five CD career encompassing collection, it misses that mark for a casual. So, and... And I don't think that it makes either party totally happy, but I think it's better than it could have been, mm-hmm. but yeah. not as good as it should have been. So, you know, that, that would be the politician's answer. You know, th- there are so many missed opportunities <laughs> just to do little things. Take the, the Alive 2 studio tracks to put the alternate mixes on instead of the regular ones. You know, stuff like that, which would have mm-hmm. made people do double takes. You know, maybe the, the non-fade-out versions of other songs or the hard-ending versions of some songs. Um, mm-hmm. You know, right down to, you know, just taking the opportunity. You know, why wasn't there a single song from, I mean, obviously, Alive 2 kind of covers it, but, you know, Rock and Roll, rock and roll Party <clears throat> in Japan or in Tokyo. Yeah. You know, to throw a single one of those songs on could have, you know, just been a little taste. If you're putting a single song on from the Daisy and ignoring Life in the Woods, but putting Acrobat, it it was almost like <clears throat> egregious omissions and just a very um, potpourri approach. I mean, it was schizophrenic in its yeah. character, but it's still good. And and again, we're supposed. Yeah, I say this all the time. It, especially when we're talking <laughs> about crew sets. We're supposed to love all these songs. So as KISS fans, yeah. we're not supposed to be dissatisfied. 
I don't remember. What did it cost? I mean, apart from those who bought, got special checkout discounts. I, I, th- <laughs> I think the cigar box was 75 Yeah, it was and, around 80 and, bucks. And, and, and the miniature guitar was like 150 175 something like that. Yeah, I think it was about, like, I, I want because I, I was thinking about the this thing i think it was about yeah i wanted to say it was like 149.95 something it like was, that it was still yeah. pretty expensive for 2001 yeah 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 so, so. They, they had one of the guitar case or the clarinet case um <laughs> yes clarinet. Yeah, that's what it is. additions of <laughs> amoeba for years in san francisco oh, really? and i'd always look at it and kind of smile when i walked by because a prominent kiss logo located anywhere in public always does that to me um, yeah, and then when this started looking pretty tatty and the book started falling apart, I'm like, okay, when I replace it, since they haven't reissued it in like a, a small format with just the the discs, um, I'll buy that clarinet case. When I actually decided to do that, went down to <laughs> Meba. It had been there. It was gone. It been there, gone. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yeah, there, there you go. I, I may still, but I, I would actually rather that they put it out again. You know, Aerosmith did Pandora's box. It started off as a long box, and then it mm-hmm. went down to DVD yeah. size book, <laughs> and then it went down to CD case size. And, <laughs> you know, if they put out the, the, the Kiss box, which included the five CDs in that exact shape and size, surely they could do that for the box. But, uh, you know, I, I guess we're going to get all this stuff eventually hopefully if they continue to give true singular album forms yeah. Well, yeah. yeah you know that, that i don't know what, what picture disc am i gonna buy tomorrow oh, <laughs> is there any anniversary <laughs> any more anniversaries that are gonna destroy the bank this month you know the yeah. bank accounts I, I'm, I'm surprised that they haven't jumped on the cassette thing now that ace did it you know that's coming come on to, now they, they seem to follow what ace does sometimes with these things maybe they do the cassette thing next I would much prefer that they hop on the record store day thing because, yeah. you know, that's oh, yeah. coming up this month as well. Uh, again, to go back to bands that actually do take advantage of it, the Aerosmith 71 show is coming out. So I look forward to hearing what that sounds like mastered compared to the copy I've got. But I like Kiss, you know, the stuff that doesn't fit into the box. And it's not Kiss, it's Universal as well, mm-hmm. you know, who take the lead on a lot of these things rather than just conveniently blaming um, Paul or Gene for everything. It would be nice if they looked at the assets that they have and figure out how to monetize everything that is sitting there, rather than just looking at it piecemeal uh, to a certain extent. And from the track listing on Destroyer 45, they seem to have done a very good job of that from what I'm aware of. So I'd like to see them now approaching stuff with, well, what can we never use in a album reissue? So how can we leverage that? And, you know, who, who knows what that might lead to. But again, it's been a good week as a KISS fan. You know, mm-hmm. two albums have been yeah. celebrated, one unexpected. The other, I think we were all expecting them to do something with Rock and Roll Over. But uh, mm-hmm. I didn't expect Picture Disc. I expected just T-shirts with them having done the, what was it, Orange yeah. Vinyl? The Orange Vinyl. Yeah, they did that a couple years ago. Yeah. Or, or to have reissued that. So I, I think things are hopeful that they might actually get around to it. Lonnie, next year is the... What's it called? Live the, the Live 20, It's the 30th 20, anniversary no, 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 of Revenge. It's the 24th anniversary of Psycho Circus. So there's the opportunity to, to body <laughs> and soul. Do, do, yeah, there's my body and soul. Give, give Psycho it. Circus the deluxe edition. And it know, deserves. That, no, it the does deserve set? it. No, the... No. The Psycho Circus deserves a deluxe edition with the full uh, live recording that was used for the European uh, bonus. Yeah, the season. Indianapolis show. That'd be cool. Yeah. Love and that. all I mean, of or... the B-sides and um, different mixes that were available yeah. and that bootleggers are making money oh, off. I... Just chuck so, it out there. I think, I, I really think that, I mean, next year is uh, Alive Revenge 2. Mess. 45th Revenge. of Alive 2. Um they got to do that. They haven't even done a color of the Live hey. 2. They haven't done anything with the Live 2, which is, you know, it's, I don't know, it's a catastrophe. <laughs> um, but uh, they should definitely have some kind of box set for that. Um, or at least do something. Maybe they'll just do a picture disc on that next year. Some T-shirts. But, 
He had more t-shirts. But Maybe a belt buckle. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Whatever they follow up. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> whatever sense. they they follow up, destroyer with something else. You know, pretty darn good. Yeah. Well, we'll have to wait and see what happens. I I wouldn't be surprised if we see the picture disc line continue. If people oh, snap sure. up, you know, five hundred copies of a special edition in forty minutes, and hopefully the response. I'm, I'm sorry. I hope the response is good to the other two because I think particularly Rock and Roll Over looks great. Can display you know one of the older ones, and they always look cool. They're you know they're not for audiophiles. So, no. <laughs> you know, if they do start doing picture disc, Lonnie, what would be the, the one that you would look forward to that would be you would walk out of a meeting to purchase it? <laughs> yeah, well, well, obviously, next year is a, is a 30th anniversary revenge. And I would love, you know, a, a, a revenge type of reissue with, with reissues of those tour T-shirts and everything like that. I mean, that, that's something I could really justify, obviously, and, and get behind. That'd be, that'd be amazing. But you know, I I think that you know, you know, I, there, there's so many possibilities out there for what they could do if if this is what they're gonna the 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 avenue they're gonna go down because you know you see a trend they they've done most of the colored vinyl they've done colored vinyl for all the '70s albums, basically ignored the '80s except for the and, one no one could buy. Yeah, except for Dress to Kill that, that, that no that almost no one got. Out in the shade. Hot, they did the one Hot in the Shades, only 80s album they, they did on color. Now it looks like we're going to go, well, we're going to make you buy these albums again on picture desk. So, you know, I, I think there's a lot of good possibilities for that. And and, I, and I'm with Mark, too. I like the idea of some of these t-shirts that are coming out, too. I think I think that's a cool thought with it as well. So, But obviously my thought is with Revenge, 30th anniversary next year, let's do something, reissue some of those shirts, you know, Put up, go make me buy a, a gold record version of Revenge to, like that to the personalized award. You no, know, r- really tempt my wallet next year. I and, mm-hmm. and I'll be all nice, Mark. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not sure what one I would want next year, but I mean, I think Revenge definitely needs to come out as well. I mean, it was a big album for them. It was a big attempt to come back and make a big record, and you know. Overall, I think it did fairly well as far as the reaction initially by KISS fans to it. So I think it would be a good idea to do that one in a, you know, anniversary format. And I'm guessing there's, you know, bonus stuff that could be had with that as well. I'm sure there's some maybe non-released music somewhere. Uh, So who knows? But yeah, and you know what? I can only imagine what kind of a cool gold record award they can make for that, you know? with that whole kind of you know bullet hole design like they did on the album cover can make something really cool with that uh but yeah i I think it's a i think it's a good idea i think it's definitely a good one and and as far as the uh, alive 2 i i am surprised i am honestly surprised that they haven't done that because it is a record that's always on the tip of the tongue of people who are big kiss fans and kiss collectors um maybe why they haven't done anything with it maybe they just don't have the tapes to redo something with it. I mean, that if there's a if there's an album that needs touching up, it's that one. That audience is way. That's like a Beatles live album. It's like, oh god, mm-hmm. you can't you can't even put headphones on to listen to that. It's horrendous. So if anything needs a touch up job, that would be that one for sure. But I highly doubt they would go in and spend the cash to do that. But uh, and speaking of T-shirts, while we were on this episode, I actually bought the. Elder Oath T-shirt while we were on here, Very so nice. I pulled the trigger and I got him. So That's nice. There you go. How much was shipping for one T-shirt? It came total. Everything came to forty-two dollars Canadian. Oh, that was not so. Bad. I was like, it was twelve. It was twelve bucks because I I got there was two options, like a like a twenty-dollar shipping and then there was like a twelve-dollar lightweight shipping charge. So I just said it's a T-shirt. What's going to happen to that, right? So right. So well, I just they took might, that they off. Right. They may just put stamps on the T-shirt and uh, <laughs> 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 like, like Amazon, Amazon's packaging and uh, and postage. I'm with Lonnie uh, for revenge, getting uh, you know some treatment Love. next year. You, you know they got to do a, a gold disc. 
uh, for that because that, that would look fantastic. It, it just has so many design mm -hmm. opportunities in my mind that let a real designer put their imagination to it and I think it could really pop and uh, be very cool as a three kind of a three-dimensional one. Um, but I'd like them to start separating out the Super Deluxes with the expanded editions and, and trying to work out a faster, you know, uh, timeline for getting some of these albums out. Revenge would be a great one to do a just an enhanced CD, a, a two CD. Keep it like they've done for the Destroyer one that's coming out as being a sampler of the best stuff for what could be on a super deluxe, um, so that you're not tied to that. But to get Revenge out there with some of the B sides and you know the unreleased stuff, which we we know that there is. You know maybe some of the rehearsals that were done with Eric Carr in the spring of 1991. Before everything mm -hmm. went bad, and just get two CDs out there. Maybe so you want to uh, touch me now? Yeah. Well, yeah. Most people have heard that. Uh, yeah, but still. You know, but uh, maybe have Gene finish that off vocally. Who knows? Um, because otherwise, it's a, it's a boring instrumental. Get Bruce to finish it with uh, lead work as well. Yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Bruce. That's an idea. Gene. Yeah. There could be. <clears throat> it, be like that Beatles anthology. There you except, go. Except everyone's hopefully uh, still with us. So another I, one. That's that's what I would like, Ken. Yeah, I, I was gonna say another one. Well, I'm gonna stick with the live too. The other one I would say next year uh, would be Creatures of the Night. Um, that's an anniversary there, so yeah. I would expect. I I really do expect something for that. If you know, not some kind of picture disc definitely that you know, more than a t-shirt is what you're saying picture, picture yeah yeah more, that. more than a belt box definitely at least a picture disc i mean if they <laughs> if they want to do a deluxe box set on it i'm all in on that one um because there's we know there's a lot of uh music that was was left you know on the whatever <laughs> the cutting room floor or whatever um for that so demos and things like that so i i'm i'm pumping for one of those two next year uh, something you know hopefully again hopefully like a box set now hopefully an anniversary on the actual anniversary rather than a half decade anniversary um, yeah someone posted a picture this week of the it's extraordinarily rare the prototype glow in the dark picture disc so the eyes in the picture well, that's disc awesome. would glow yeah. and it is i i would love them to actually do that with the loudest band in the uh, world uh, print yeah. on on the back side of that <clears throat> mm -hmm. is instead of the lightning. That's awesome. Because, you know that that would be absolutely fantastic, and maybe repro that <clears throat> poster in some form. All right, that's it for this week. Uh, box set, whole bunch of other thoughts, a whole bunch of stuff. You know, so chime in with your opinions on what we've discussed today, and tell us where we're right, where we're wrong, what we forgot, because we always forget something when we're doing this, even with notes. <laughs> All right, that's it. So yeah. from Ken, from Lonnie, Mark, and myself, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.